Okay, so let's say you've found yourself a dark rock, kind of like the one that I have here. Um, as you can see, it's in the darker color scale. It's sort of a gray, silvery tone. It's kind of shiny and sparkly in this case, um, but it's very heavy. So if you find yourself a heavy rock, it's usually pretty intriguing, and it's and you might wonder, what is it? How do I know what it is? So here's some thoughts. First off, um, igneous rocks can come in these kind of dark colorations, and we might be thinking along the lines of, say, the uh, intrusive. The intrusive rocks would be, or plutonic rocks might be something like a gabbro, which is a pretty coarse-grained igneous rock, being that it's plutonic, and it's just it's darker because it's rich in those ferromagnesian minerals. Uh, it's going to be a lot of pyroxenes, amphiboles, maybe some olivine, stuff like that. So the other one that you might look for in an igneous rock category would be basalt. And um, basalt is the opposite. It's actually an extrusive igneous rock. It's volcanic-related. So it tends to have finer crystals than the, the previous one we talked about. Um, but it is also rich in those darker minerals. Um, so it will have a kind of a grayish, darker color. Um, but a lot of basalt that you'll find, if you find a, a chunk, um, look for sort of a porous look. And if it has that porous look, you know that it's probably volcanic and could be a basalt. And at that point... You can investigate um, some other things about it. If you want to learn more about the igneous rocks, I do talk more extensively about them here. But yeah, that's just to get you thinking, like, could it be a chunk of some sort of igneous rock? That's what you would look for there. Now, the other type of rock category that it could be, especially if you find a pretty dense chunk of rock, would be to think, is it metamorphic? And the main thing I'd say here is consider... Uh, look for that banding and like the foliated look typical of metamorphic rocks. If you see that, you know, you have a chunk of a metamorphic rock of some sort. Um, again, being that it's got a lot of those darker minerals, you might have some kind of schist, maybe an amphibolite that's rich in the hornblende minerals. Um, so yeah, at that point you'd start, you know, if this is a chunk of a rock, then you, th then it's obviously made up of a lot of minerals. So then you could identify what minerals you have. Now, putting that aside of what kind of chunk of a rock you have, if you want to know, it, could this be, maybe it's con more consistent. Maybe it's a chunk of the same type of mineral, like the one I have here in my hand or, um, and you want to identify what else could it be? If it's not those things, some other things that you might be wondering uh, you might consider, is this just, is this some sort of chunk of iron? Is this rich in iron minerals? Well, like I said, those rocks I talked about actually were pretty rich in iron minerals, but there are some specific minerals, some iron ores that you can find mass chunks of. And, uh, one I just talked about here and that's hematite. So, um, we talked about how to identify hematite. So you'll want to check that out because there are some specific things that will clue you in and help you roll out if it's hematite or not. And one of those was testing the streak. Hematite has a nice deep red streak and that helps you know if you have a chunk of hematite. But being that it has a red streak, it actually can be this gray silvery kind of mineral. So it doesn't matter um, that it, you know, you might expect it to be red since it's iron, um, but it actually can be this kind of metallic kind of silvery looking chunk of a mineral. Uh, another one that tends to be really heavy. So obviously, look, question iron. Uh, next question, lead. Do you have a, did you find a chunk of lead or a piece of rock that has a lot of lead in it? Again, I recommend checking out my discussions on each of these minerals so you'll be more comfortable in identifying those. I'll show a lot of samples of them and talk about their properties. But again, one thing with lead would be, um, well, actually it will not have the red streak of the hematite, um, but it's also, it has certain crystal forms that you can find that are fairly easy to recognize once you're comfortable with it. Um, it's actually an absolutely beautiful mineral. It's, um, well, if we're talking about one of the most common, which would be galena, 
It's a really pretty, really cool crystal form there. There are some other lead ores. Um, that is really the most common one. So you will you might look to see if it's galena. So another big one that people often think when they find a heavy rock is, is this a meteorite? Um, it takes some practice to identify a meteorite. And not every heavy rock that someone finds turns out to be a meteorite. In fact, a lot of them are actually some sort of local or terrestrial piece of uh, iron so you you often look is there a local iron uh, source if so then probably one of those um, and there are other features uh, that's a whole discussion for another day all the features of meteorites and how you look for them um, some you know there's there's some things that you can look for inside the meteorite but that would require cutting it open um, to look for content of, say, like nickel or something, or the patterns on the outside um, that show that it, you know, from its travel through the atmosphere. Um, so there are some things to look for, but yeah, we'll talk about that more another day. Um, and lastly, there are just some minerals, some other minerals. So those would be the main ones. If you rule those out and you, you really think it's not that, um, there are just a, a couple other minerals that tend to be heavy. So let's look at those. So many of the metallic ores, such as those, say, containing a lot of silver or gold, would definitely be heavy, but I just assumed you're probably not just coming across big chunks of this stuff. Um, but yeah, any any of the other metallic ores as well, um, anything with a lot of those iron or magnesium minerals, um, pyrite, uh, cobalt ores. Um, I already mentioned the iron ores, hematite and magnetite included, but also molybdenum is usually in association with, say, copper ores. And a lot of those tend to have some good weight to them. Uh, the cinnabar, which is a source of mercury, that's pretty hefty. Uh, bismuth, chromium, all of those. Also, cassiterite, which is a tin oxide, um, is a pretty heavy mineral. So if that's included in the chunk of rock you have, then that will give it some weight. Actually, it's the weight of that mineral that is helpful in um, distinguishing it from other similar looking minerals, say like a tourmaline. Um, and another one is uraninite. Uraninite tends to be pretty heavy. Um, it's a greenish to blackish brown metallic look uh, pitch blend variety. But that one should be pretty easy to distinguish because it is radioactive. So any radioactive detector, a uh, Geiger counter, um, will help you distinguish that one. Uh, plus, it has a certain look to it. Um, if I've been actually playing around with a, a new Geiger counter um, lately here, so definitely check that out if you're interested in those results. And the only other thing to keep in mind is slag, which is a metallic aggregate uh, left over from mining processes. It's usually a dark kind of brownish black, sometimes iridescent. So that also might have sort of a smooth look to it. We'll look at slag here too, so you can know how to identify that. But if you're in a mining area, keep that in mind as another possibility. Other than that, that should be a pretty thorough run through for you. If you find something like this, again, that's heavy and um, maybe metallic or shiny and you're trying to identify it, go through the list of rocks and minerals I've talked about here. And if you're still not sure, then check out my minerals playlist. I'll be going over all the minerals that I have in my collection or that I find in the field and giving a run through of their properties and how to identify them. So that could also be really helpful. I'll do rocks, minerals, and all things geo here. So I'll see you guys on the next adventure.